right guys, so today I'm gonna show you how I created the highlights on Rick Fairless's newest creation, his Victory Octane called Ethel. But before I get started on that, let's go ahead and do some house cleaning here and go to Facil Fotillustrator, Fotillustrator com to check out some of my work. Go to galleries and check out all the stuff that I do. You can also go to the resources for photographers and I'll show you some other stuff there. I have other goodies in there. Also, like us on uh, Facebook at Boot Illustrator. Go to Instagram. Absolutely do this. Go to Instagram right now. Stop, pause, go to Instagram and like us on Instagram at Boot Illustrator. Also, YouTube. Uh, you can go to YouTube and go to uh, the Foot Illustrator or whatever the co or you know the URL there is there. I don't know what it is. And also, rather than featuring another photographer today, I'm going to feature the website, uh, internationally known website for motorcycle for the motorcycle industry that these photos were featured on. And I'll have a link in the notes below or on the uh, post here in, on the website and you can check this out for yourself. Now, let's get into today's tutorial because this is pretty dang awesome. So, uh, as I mentioned in the post below, uh, I, I, start, I did it this way. I, did, I uh, edited this image this way because uh, I was faced with a challenge. And that challenge was I was used to doing the portraits or the photography of these motorcycles a certain way, and that is composited images many composite Im images. I can't talk today. What is up with me? It's like I'm tongue tied. Many composited images put together to create one epic, awesome portrait, much like we saw here with the uh, Pam Chopper of Rick Fairless. So there's a lot of different images that I pieced together to give it that depth and dimension using artificial light, natural lighting, all these different things. A lot of work goes into this type of portrait. So with Rick's new Oc Victory Octane, uh, we needed to do something different because he needed six glamour shots of it and then many up close shots of this bike to, for the magazine article and for the website that he uh, is featured on. So I had to do something different. It took way too much time to do it the other way. So this is the way I figured it out. So this is the end result. This is what I delivered, one of the shots that I delivered to uh, Rick for that purpose. Now take that away before uh, after we did the coloring uh, and then the initial edit here uh, go down to the highlights and I'm going to turn that off and you can see the difference here on how it really brings out that the highlights but also brings out a lot of depth and dimension to the bike. I mean even as far along as in the I'm pointing to it like you guys can see what I'm pointing to but in the uh, cords here or cables and along the uh, exhaust pipes here in the wheels that type of thing we can see how these highlights affect that so I'm going to turn this off and we're going to create a new layer and we're going to call that highlights I'm not really good about naming my layers especially when I'm using so few layers like I am here so right now we're going to keep the blend mode at normal uh, but I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you two different techniques, I guess, techniques. We're going to combine two different things. We're going to change the blend mode and we're going to use blend if, uh, to create these highlights. So, uh, right now we're going to select white, select our brush, put on hundred percent opacity, hundred percent flow, uh, just to start with here. And I like feathering my stuff down quite a bit, especially when I'm doing highlights and shadows and that type of thing. So we're just going to go through here and we're going to follow the lines here of the highlights just like that bring it up a little bit of highlight there and I just usually I'll start off with some basic highlights just like this just to get us started so then we take those highlights and we can get it put a little bit up here too on on that thing all right so we take those highlights and we're going to put a an overlay blend mode on it. So already we can see how that changed uh, the highlights of that bike. So rather than having that, we go to that. Now we can take that opacity down and we can take it down to 50%, you know, something to that effect. Let's say 55% and we can see the difference there. All right. 
but that's not good enough. That doesn't look natural enough because a highlight isn't going to fill in the whole area. It's going to fill in only the light areas. So we're going to use blend if to change that. And we can, uh, and rather than moving this slider over, which is going to take away our highlight, we're going to use this slider and we're going to really enhance that highlight. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to push alt or option and we're going to bring this far slider over here. And I don't know what I used on the last one, but let's just say 164. And then we're, I'm going to bring this over just a little bit. You can see it changing in the dark areas just a little bit as we move this over. Okay, move it back and forth. If we bring it too far over, we start losing our highlight, obviously. We don't want that. So we're going to just bring it over to about right, probably about right there. Okay. All right. So now we have an opacity of 55%. That looks pretty darn good right there. Let's see if we can bring this up just a little bit. Okay. So that looks pretty good right there. This is our original and this is where we're going. This is our original. This is where we're going with it. Okay. So we still have a little bit of work here. Just change the opacity down. You can bring it down to, you know, as little as you want and just find that area, that happy area where it is, looks somewhat natural. And if you see to me, it looks pretty natural along the back fender here. It looks pretty natural up here. It looks maybe a little less natural along here, maybe just a little too sharp. So what I would do in this case is I would get my eraser tool, uh, bring an opacity down to, you know, 13, 14%. And I do it that low because I don't want, I want to do multiple swipes if I need to, to get, get it where I want. So you just bring it through here, just like that and just paint it up just like that. Now you could, if you wanted to work non-destructively, you could put a blend or a um, layer mask on there and use your paintbrush to do the same thing. So now that we're here, we're going to grab our paintbrush tool again at hundred percent white. And now we can start going through the bike in a little bit more detail and adding these highlights to it. Okay. We can do that on the cables that we have here. Bring that down here and you can see how the highlights are changing somewhat uh, subtly on that. Now that's a big thing. You want it subtle. You can see how that changes on the engine there in a subtle way. We're bringing these highlights out, which is really kind of cool that you, we can do that. And on the exhaust pipe, we can bring that out just a little bit like that. We don't want to carry it too far down in here because then it'll start looking a little bit fake. Okay, and then down in here and bring it. And the nice thing is you don't have to be absolute with this because if you brush into a dark area, it's not gonna affect it because we have our opacity and we have our blend if mode on. So we don't have to worry about that. And then bring out the, uh, the cage there on that exhaust, which I think this is really cool. I've never seen this. I think that is really badass, really cool. Um, so you see how that just, I did that too much on that, uh, sticker there. I don't like it. So then you I just back it up and do it on the areas that aren't the stickers. Uh, we can bring out the tail light just a little bit, come in here and bring out the wheel of the bike just a little bit, come in here. And I like calling it painting in the the highlights just a little bit there. You can see how that brings out the texture in this area here and the, I guess what would be called the spokes of the bike. By the way, I don't know a whole lot about motorcycles for sure. If you couldn't tell, uh, bring that out or bring this out just a little bit. And I like this technique really good because we don't have to worry a whole lot about accuracy. Okay, we can paint in the dark areas, but it's not going to show because of what how we have it set up. Bring those handlebars out just a little bit. I'm doing this really rough. I'd probably do a little bit better detail, obviously, if I were doing this for Rick. 
okay but you get the idea there so that gives you a really good idea of uh, how to bring out some of these highlights on a motorcycle like this and I think that looks really pretty cool there maybe uh, erase it off the back fender just a tiny bit here give it a little bit more depth but that looks pretty good maybe bring in a little bit more detail right there at the top edge of that bike cool maybe in a logo there that we can barely see brings out a little bit of um, detail there we could even go in here and do some of the stitching on his stuff on his leather bags which are custom made specifically for this bike and this style of bike so anyway you kind of get a good idea of how to enhance highlights using one the blend mode of an overlay and then two we can use the blend if to really um, hone in the highlighted areas and remove some of the darker areas from that so this is how I enhance highlights on a motorcycle now here's my tip to you uh, regarding using these you know techniques I guess to create highlights there's no magical way to do it there's no magical setting on uh, you know the opacity of your layer there's no magical setting on blend if you just kind of have to play with it and figure it out and figure out what works best for what you're trying to add highlights to now for me uh, this works really well on a somewhat monochromatic motorcycle that's metal and that type of thing I don't necessarily know that it would work so well on uh, the chopper here that we have like Pam uh, that's more colorful and that type of thing and I'm not so sure it would work on skin tones and, and that type of thing those are things I have to still work with and, and play with if I want to because uh, I have other ways of doing things um, to see if how those work now what I would suggest you go out and try this try it on multiple things uh, let me know what your problems are what you're having difficulties with in you know photography also in Photoshop and let's see if we can't create videos to help everybody here uh, go out and try this see what happens let me see what happens send me an email shoot me a comment here on the website or on YouTube I'd love to see what you guys are doing until next time be awesome and I'll see you on the next Photillustrator tutorials.